Hi and welcome to this video lecture on the topic of shear stresses in rectangular beams. Now this is one of the topics which goes in conjunction with the topic of bending stresses in beams. Okay, so before you watch this video, it is recommended that you go through the video on the bending stresses and the bending of beams. Okay, now uh, to start off, let us now assume that a beam is being subjected to non-uniform bending. By non-uniform bending, we means that the, the beam is being subjected to bending moment M as well as shear force F. Okay. Now, the stress due to bending moment M would be the bending stress sigma B, which can be calculated with the help of the simple flexural formula, where M is the bending moment being applied, I is the uh, moment of inertia and y is the distance of the fiber from the neutral axis and that is the usual meaning of the symbols now in this section uh, we will investigate the calculation and the distribution of shear stress that is associated when the beam is being applied by the shear force f so we will be calculating sigma or oh sorry tau or the the value of tau upon application of F and then the distribution how is this thing varying across the cross section of the beam okay we know that how the bending stress varies across the cross section of a beam is that the value of bending stress at these neutral axis is zero so this is the variation of the bending stress so if you have a case of sagging the topmost layer will be under compression so therefore you will have a negative value of bending stress and the bottommost layer would be under tension which produces a positive bending stress at the bottommost layer and at the neutral axis the bending stress is zero okay so this is a little bit of recap on the topic of bending stresses in beams now let us begin uh, this analysis by considering a simplest case so what we see over here is a rectangular cross section the rectangular cross section has width b and depth h okay you can call this h as height as well now it is being subjected to a shear force f okay and this shear force is on this face that is the forwardmost face of the beam right now we assume we have to you know actually find out the distribution of the shear stress uh, across the cross section so we assume that tau that is the shear stress due to the shear force acts parallel to the direction of application of the shear force okay so this is the assumption that you are making that the shear force is acting like this this is parallel to the shear force that is this force okay, the, this is one assumption that we make now the other assumption that we make is that the shear stress distribution is uniform across the width of the beam okay so the second is that the we will be taking a uniform stress distribution uniform distribution of tau so these two assumptions will form the backbone of this analysis okay now let us zoom in a bit okay if we zoom in a bit and just just focus your attention to this section that is drawn over here that is section mn okay so this is a, a small element mn which is made between the two planes okay now if you take this element and redraw it as a free body diagram over here so what you can see uh, as per the first assumption the shear force due to the shear load is this the white arrows okay that is on the vertical faces of this element so these are the this is the vertical face 
okay this is the vertical face of the element now in accordance with the assumption that we have this vertical shear stress is uniformly distributed on the vertical face of the element and we also know that the shear stress on one side brings about a complementary shear stress of equal magnitude on a perpendicular face of the element so the perpendicular face of a vertical uh, of, uh, of a vertical face would be a horizontal face so this is the horizontal face of the element now on this horizontal face there will be a production of complementary shear stress that is being developed due to these vertical shear stresses okay so this is uh, in accordance with the concept of uh, complementary shear stress now okay now this observation about the equality of horizontal and vertical shear stresses now let me when before going into this observation let me draw a side view of this section if I draw it like this this is the side view of this section okay where this is the vertical face and this is the horizontal face in observation the vertical face will be acted upon by a vertical shear stress like this and the horizontal face will then have a horizontal shear stress like this okay so and in order to bring about an equilibrium this these two will be your complementary stresses acting across the element so you will have these stresses as well okay and all these stresses are equal in magnitude although the directions are different now now as we were saying that the equality of horizontal and vertical shear stresses this uh, leads to an interesting conclusion regarding the shear stresses at the top and the bottom of the beam okay 